Great, wonderful. Now, uh, in this uh, session with us, many are there who are completely novice, who have no clue about anything, right? We have to keep them also into consideration whenever we decide to teach, you know, uh, any of the concepts. So by keeping them in mind, I will be teaching something which is very basic, which every developer must know about. Now, in this session, there might be some of the developer who might already know about this. You might, uh, you just have to, you know, have patience and listen to this and majority of them have no clue about this which you must know if you call yourself as a software developer right so you should have a complete clarity on this because directly if you write a big program and if you try to explain what exactly it is you're not uh, it's not going to make any sense you should know the complete background so that in future whenever we utter these terminologies these words in future classes you should not get confused so usually what happens is some uh, sometimes you teach any concept we use some of the terminologies the concept will be easy but many of the learners will get confused because of the terms which we have used, right? So by keeping all this you know, into consideration, some basic concept we are going to discuss. And if you have any question, definitely we shall be able to answer them, right? Great. Now, let's, uh, let me just share my screen. Great, great, wonderful, wonderful. Now, before we proceed, let's understand something very fundamental about the computer. I hope all of you are aware there is a computer in different forms these days. Laptop is a computer, your mobile phone is a computer, your desktop is a computer. Now, tell me uh, different components which are there in the computer. On the chat, can you please mention? Great, 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 wonderful. Can you please tell me the most important component in your computer? Because of which your system will not work? Wonderful, wonderful. The answers are flowing. Great. Yes, you are right. The most important part of your computer is CPU. In other words, I'll be referring the CPU like this. Or you can also refer to it as microprocessor. Microprocessor, CPU, all of them are same. You can call microprocessor, you can call CPU, you can call processor, all of them are referring to same. The most important component in your machine is this processor because of this only everything happens, right? So if you want something to happen, if you want to make a call, if you want anything in general to happen, this is the one who is responsible for this. Now, this CPU, this processor, this microprocessor, to make this, the semiconductor technology is involved in the backend. So many things are involved, many you know uh, components are involved to make this happen. But one of the key components is semiconductor. Now I know I want to get I know in detail about this. What I'm trying to say is semiconductor is something with where the transistors are involved. Now, if I say the processor, the most important component of your computer is of something related to semiconductor, that means it is also made out of transistor. That means this processor, somewhere the transistors are involved to make it, right? And transistors means there are two types of transistors we know, NPN and PNP, right? And in other words, the transistors are something which understands only two things, either low voltage or they understand or high voltage. Low voltage means zero volt, high voltage means five volt, right? So whatever I'm trying to say so far, it is in terms of hardware engineering, right? Processor, low voltage, high voltage. But as a software engineer, if you want to look at the same thing, you have to come to a conclusion that this processor or CPU, which is the most important component in our, you know, a computer is something which is also made out of transistor. That means it understands low voltage and you know, high voltage. In other words, low voltage in software engineering terms, we refer it as zero and high voltage referred as one. In general, what I'm trying to say is the most important component in our computer can understand only zero or ones. Apart from zero and one, it, I cannot understand anything. So we came to a conclusion that the most important component in your computer understands zeros are ones. In other words, binary code. I hope I'm making sense here. Great. Now, this processor is something which is a dumb device. It cannot do something by itself. You have made it so that it can do some work to it. But if you want it to work for you, you have to tell him that you have to do some work. Now, how do you tell? In a way, it understands. Example, I want my processor to do addition for me. I have to tell in a way it understands. Example, I want to do an addition. So I'll say 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. Now, I want it to uh, perform some subtraction to me. So I'll just tell here as 1101. One, zero, one. I want it to tell, uh, no, it, it do some uh, multiplication for me. I'll just do 0010010. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Division for me, 0010. Zero, zero, zero. I hope I'm making sense. Now, exactly, this is not the exact code for addition multiplication. This is just an example. Right. So writing code in binary code 
in a format which your machine understands is referred as now it refers as something called as machine level code now why machine level code writing instructions in a form which your machine understands we refer them as machine level code fine now at the beginning of your computer at the initial stage of the coding people used to code write the programs in which format if you ask you in the form of machine level now what is program again all the instructions in one place we call it as program now addition instruction multiplication instruction subtraction instructions all these instructions in one place what we call it as a program now programming style initially was a machine level language a language which your machine understands so this entire programming is done in machine level language now these instructions if you give it to your processor can you tell me please it will understand or not yes it will understand and it will give you the result and definitely you will be getting output here whatever you are expecting so initially people were very very happy that yes we have found a such a device where we if we instruct it is doing our task it is making a task then and it is giving us the result but this is not the good approach right now if you want to write some bit applications and if you have to code it in zeros and ones can you imagine how many zeros and how many ones are involved and as a human being it's very difficult to you know remember the numbers many of you in fact have not even you know remember your own mobile phone because human brain is designed in that way that we face difficulty in remembering the numbers in other words writing code in binary format in zeros and ones was not an easy task for human beings now people were demanding something a better approach that is when one guy came and suggested that we should have a better approach where instead of writing the code in the form of zeros and ones let's write in the form of mnemonics in other words for addition why to write all the zeros and ones just write add for subtraction just write sub for division just write div for multiplication maybe just write mul fine so writing code in the form of mnemonics is referred as something called as assembly level language so once this style of you know a coding came into picture instructions came into picture people started to code write programs not in machine level rather in assembly level now all the applications all the programs used to be written in this assembly level language fine now tell me all the instructions are in assembly level language now if you give it to the processor will you get the result of course not why because machine says only one thing i am the one who understands zeros and ones if you say me something called as add sub div mul this is not what i understand i don't know what is add i don't even know what is sub i understand zeros and ones you tell something in binary form i'll do the work but you are telling something add sub i cannot understand that is when they introduce a concept called as assembler what is the duty of assembler if you ask me assembler is a system software which will convert your assembly level language into machine level language and now if you give to machine level language will you get the output for the second time yes you will be getting the result i hope i am able to you know uh, uh, you know i hope you are able to understand this people started to demand yes this 100% assembly level language compared to machine level language is better we need not to remember the we did not write a code in the form of zeros and ones binary code which is quite difficult we can just write using the mnemonics but again you know as a human we always try for the betterment we always think something better should always come that is when people started to demand a better programming language a better approach because so many issues are there with respect to this mnemonics this assembly level language also right so that is when people told why to write add don't even write that just till plus why to write sub just till minus just tell like this just tell you know uh symbols and are not just symbols write english words print print means print scan means scan if miss if else miss else that means a demand of writing code using the symbols and english like structure came into picture and that is when people were able to make such a programming languages which are using all the symbols and english like commands and such style of coding such style of programming is also referred as high level language now once you have this option will you go for machine level in assembly level of course not i hope you are able to understand this now that is when it was almost in 1960s are you know that stage is where when people started to code it 
you know entire programs entire software by using the high level languages high level language means simple where your symbols and english like commands are used now if you have option to use english like commands and symbol will you go for machine level or assembly level will you go for it of course not now you have a better option right now people started to write all the coding in this style which is high level language now tell me logically if you have understood so far whatever we have discussed if you give this high level language programs to your processor your machine who is responsible to execute it will it be able to execute of course not because your machine says only one thing i am the one who understands only zeros and ones in binary format if you say something plus minus print scan if else all this english i cannot understand because i have a problem you have me you have made me so i just understand zeros and ones you tell me something is zeros and ones i'll be doing that no but you have written all the instructions in high level language using the english right now what you have to do is in between they came up with one more system software name of the system software is only called as compiler now what is compiler what is the work of compiler compiler will take high level languages input and will convert that into machine level language will convert that into machine level language now if you give that machine level language to your processor will it be able to understand now since then even today we use high level languages all the languages comes under this header which makes use of symbols and english like commands now people those who have problem in understanding high level language imagine the you know headache of all the machine level developers